In this video, uh, I'll be talking about the Mandelblatt set. The Mandelblatt set is a very complex, uh, interesting object. Um, we introduced it last time. We, we at least defined what the Mandelblatt set is. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about some properties about them uh, without proof. Um, the set like Mandelblatt set uh, deserves its own graduate level course uh, in maybe in a course titled something like complex dynamics. And uh, we are just kind of scratching the surface and then moving on to the next topic. Um, so I, I wanna say a few things about it, uh, but a lot of the results that I'm gonna mention is very difficult to prove in, in the time I'm giving it. So uh, take it with a grain of salt and uh, um, here it is. Okay, so remember uh, we defined it last time. So the, the Mandelbrot set is set of all uh, complex values C for which the Julia set uh, appears connected, right? Um, so for each, complex number C, you can define a Julia set, which is the, the boundary of uh, base and attraction to infinity. And for that particular C, if the Julia set is connected, uh, you're in the, in the Mandelblatt set. If it's not, if it looks disconnected, it, it can, uh, when you try to plot it, it looks dusty, uh, then uh, it's not in the Mandelblatt set. Okay, so, so kind of Mandelblatt set is like the map that describe uh, all of the Julia sets, kind of. All right, so uh, we've done some uh, exploration of Julia sets, so some examples. Um, uh, zero's in the, the Julia set, sorry, zero's in the Mandelblatt set because uh, the Julia set is circle, the unit circle is connected, uh, it's in the Mandelbrot set. We were also able to compute the Julia set for z squared minus two. Uh, that is in the Mandelbrot set because the Julia set looks like uh, the line segment from negative two to two. Um, and then for all other Julia sets, uh, we had to rely on a computer to see the picture. Um, you could uh, pick a point point at a time. So one quarter happens to uh, be in the Julia set. One does, does not belong to the Julia set. Um, okay. So uh, how do you actually make the picture of Mandelbrot set? Because uh, doing, making Julia set is already kind of computationally intensive. For each pixel, we have to do some iterates. And after getting the Julia set, determining if it's connected or not, uh, and then you have one pixel for the Mandelbrot set. That's a lot of work for just to get just to get one pixel. Um, so uh, there's a shortcut, uh, and that's this theorem. So it turns out that uh, the the Julia set is connected if and only if whether the zero is in that basin of attraction or not. So uh, you don't have to check the entire Julia set. You just have to see if the zero um, is in the basin of attraction to infinity, does it blow up or does it stay bounded? Um, so it's in the filled in Julia set. Uh, in fact, uh, you could be a little bit more specific. Um, uh, it's in the Mandelbrot set if and only if the iterates stay less than or equal to two for all n. So the radius of two is the point of no return for uh, Mandelbrot set, right? So, um, so pick, pick any uh, complex number C. Uh, you just have to check the orbit for the, the zero, starting with the zero value Z. Uh, and then you, you run it until uh, does it, if it gets bigger than two, then it's gonna blow up the infinity. Uh, if it stays less than or equal to two for a long time, then it's in the Mandelbrot set, probably. Okay. And that's, this is the pseudocode right here. So uh, look at a window 
Um, and if you're drawing the Mandelblatt set, uh, reasonable window to pick if you want the whole Mandelblatt set for real values between negative two and positive three quarters. Uh, and uh, for imaginary uh, values from negative uh, three over two to positive three over two. So you can kind of see that he has um, mirror reflection across the, the real uh, axis. So um, the top half looks the same as the, the bottom half. Okay. Um, you, you could do this window, but some, you might kind of zoom in to see the, the intricate uh, pattern um, if you want to see closer, right? Um, we could pick some maximum iteration, so maybe like a thousand. Uh, and for each pixel uh, in the window, uh, you uh, look at the, the iteration starting at zero uh, of this uh, function, z squared plus that particular c. Um, and in that, within the maximum iteration, if it stays within two, uh, you call it black. Uh, if it exceeds two uh, at a particular point, then you, you, you could stop computing. You could just color it white. Okay. And of course, uh, again, if it takes more iteration to uh, reach two, uh, you could color it darker um, if you want gradation um, in the picture. Okay, so uh, this this is this is what the Mandelbrot set looks like. Just kind of a reminder. Um, so uh, properties. So Mandelbrot set itself is connected. So uh, Mandelbrot got this wrong. <laughs> the the person who studied this originally uh, made some plots using you know. Um, computers that weren't as good at the time. Uh, and with, with their resolution, it looked like some pixels appeared out of uh, nowhere. Um, so he actually conjectured that it was not connected. Um, but it was proved uh, eventually that it's a connected set. So everything, everything in the Mendelblatt set is connected by uh, uh, something to its, itself. Uh, okay, Mandelblatt uh, is containing the disk of radius two. Um, boundary is very intricate. Um, that's an understatement. Um, we'll we'll see uh, a video in a bit where we zoom into part of the Mandelblatt set, and it's very rich. Um, there's a, some parts of the Mandelblatt that you can describe. So this is a perfect circle right there. Uh, and this bit right here is called the main cardioid. It looks like a heart that's tipped over. Um, you could actually write down the formula um, for this main cardioid. Um, <clears throat> uh, so you could kind of, uh, yeah, you, you could think about it as, um, circle uh, of radius one half going counterclockwise, um, but you uh, subtract uh, something that's going in twice as quickly uh, of radius one quarter. Um, so if you, if you kind of imagine a quarter of radius one half and tiny bit some coin that's uh, half the radius, um, and then track one point on this coin as you uh, rotate that around. Um, you might get something like this. Um, okay. Oh, oh, this is an interesting fact. Um, on the rational theta, uh, as it goes around on this main cardioid, every rational number there is a bulb that's attached to it, which is interesting. So there's infinitely many of these bulbs. Um, and uh, the larger the denominator of this rational number, the smaller it tends to be. Um, 
Uh, so, so that's there's lots of balls attached to it. Uh, there are some points that I have a difficult time pronouncing, <clears throat> so I won't even try. Um, these are points uh, where the orbits of zero is pre-periodic, but not periodic. Those, uh, those points have Julia set that corresponds to um, filled in Julia sets. So uh, there's no, those things look like lightnings uh, or hairy lightnings. Um, where there's no like black meat to the to the filled in Julia set, um, so that's a interesting fact. <clears throat> and uh, when you actually look at the Mandelblatt set, not the Julia set, um, Mandelblatt set has sim self similar portions. Uh, so there's parts of Mandelblatt set that looks like the full Mandelblatt set. That that's a smaller copy. That's paste it inside. Um, so you, you can find these self-similar Mandelblatt set, mini Mandelblatt set uh, at these points. Okay, and uh, because we're talking about properties, I'm just gonna give you uh, one conjecture about Mandelblatt set that's still yet to be proved, uh, that it's locally connected. So it's definitely connected, but it's not proved that um, when you zoom in, um, any parts of this Mandelblatt set, you do not have to go far away to come back to the same, same place. Everything that's connected around there, uh, you don't have to stray too far to get to. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you zoom in, uh, it's still connected. <clears throat> okay, so I think those are all the properties I wanted to mention, but I also wanted to show you a video uh, of uh, zooming in on a Mandelblatt set because I think um, looking at one picture of it doesn't do justice to how uh, interesting this object is. It's very infinitely um, intricate patterns uh, in there. Okay, so uh, I Googled Zoom, uh, sorry, Googled on YouTube. Um, this is the first picture I get. I'm not gonna play the background music um, because I don't wanna, I'm gonna upload this video to YouTube later. I don't wanna get DMCA'd. Um, but yeah, here's, here's another point like that. It looks like the whole Mandelblatt set. Um, and this video um, is 70 minutes long. Uh, and this entire time, it's zooming into one particular complex number. Um, and I'm not, don't, don't worry, I'm not gonna play the entire 70 minutes and maybe I'll just um, play a minute. Um, but you could see that like, as you zoom in, you see more and more um, of these beautiful structures. Um, and it's absolutely mind blowing that something like this, this complicated it could be described in one line of mathematics. Okay. So um, you have internet, so you can, you can watch the rest. Uh, if, if that looks interesting to you. Um, I'm gonna end the video here. Uh, we are gonna move away from uh, fractals now um, and start talking about what it means to be uh, differentiable in the complex sense. So it's actually complex differentiation is different from real differentiation. So we'll tackle that next. <clears throat>